Welcome to Electro Online, and here our next example looks like it doesn't really belong in this set. How do we use partial fractions to solve something like that? But actually there's a connection we can draw if we make the right substitution. Let x equal the sine of theta. And if we now take the derivative of both sides with respect to theta, so we take dx d theta, that will be equal to the derivative of this, which will be the cosine of theta times d theta d theta. Of course, we don't have to write that. And then if we take the d theta and move it to the other side, we can write that dx is equal to the cosine of theta times d theta. If we now go ahead and substitute x equals sine of theta and dx equals to this in the, in the integral here, what do we get? Well, here we have cosine of theta d theta, which will become dx. So this will then be written as the integral of dx divided by, that would be the x squared plus 4 times x minus 5. And all of a sudden we end up with an integral that looks like we, we can use the partial fraction technique to solve. Let's take the integrand, which would be 1 over x squared plus 4x minus 5, and find the partial fractions for that. So we have 1 over um, x squared plus 4x minus 5, which can be written as 1 over, if we see if we can factor this, that would be an x and an x. We need um, how about a minus, hmm, how about a plus 5? and a minus 1. I think that will do it because 5 times a minus 1 is a minus 5 and plus 5 minus 1 is plus 4. So that is the proper uh, factor of the denominator. And of course now we can write this as a over x plus 5 plus b over x minus 1. And of course the technique then is to multiply both fractions by whatever we need to to make the denominators equal to what we had here on the left side. And so we're going to write this as a divided by x plus 5 uh, plus b divided by x minus 1 and then the proper factors let me use a different color for that so the left fraction we're going to multiply by x minus 1 both in the denominator and the numerator and here we're going to multiply this side x plus 5 and x plus 5 and notice now that the denominators are all the same as the denominator that I had over there which means I can now write 1 over x plus 5 times x minus 1 is equal to, well here we can write ax minus a plus bx plus 5b, simply getting rid of the parentheses in the numerator, divided all by the same denominator of x plus 5 times x minus 1. Okay, now you realize that the denominators are the same, which means that the numerators must be the same. Since we don't have an x term in the numerator and I have an ax and a bx there, that then implies that a plus b must equal 0 because I don't have an x on the left side. And here the constant 1 must equal to minus a plus 5b. So minus a plus 5b must equal to the constant 1. So there's my two equations and two unknowns. I can solve those for a and b. From the first equation, I can write that a is equal to minus b by moving the b over to the other side and now substituting that in for the a over here. So minus a, and a is a minus b, so minus minus b plus 5b is equal to 1. So that becomes a positive b plus 5b, that's 6b equals 1, or b is equal to 1 divided by 6. And if b is equal to 1 divided by 6, 6 and a is equal to minus b, that means that a is equal to minus 1 over 6. And now I have both the constant a and the constant b. And so that means I can now write my integral right here in terms of the two partial fractions. And so that means that this is equal to the integral of a, which is negative 1 sixth, divided by the denominator x plus 5, and that's times dx, plus the second integral, which is now b, which is a positive 1 sixth, divided by the denominator, which is x minus 1, times dx. And those are both easy to integrate. So this is equal to um, minus 1 6 times the natural log of x plus 5 plus 1 6 times the natural log of x minus 1 plus a constant of integration. Now notice I could factor out um, 
a minus one six. I can move them around. I'm going to simplify this a little bit. Just so I'm going to move them around and factor out a one six. So this is equal to one sixth times. I'll write this one first, which is the natural log of x minus one minus. I'll take this one next, the natural log of x plus 5 plus a constant of integration. And notice that the natural log of x minus 1 minus the natural log of x plus 5, I can write that as a single natural log. So I can write this as 1 sixth times the natural log of the x minus 1 divided by x plus 5, like so, plus a constant of integration. Now, Remember that we started out with sines and cosines and we made the substitution x equals sine of theta. So now we can substitute back in for x, I can write sine of theta. So finally, I can then say that this is equal to 1 over 6 times the natural log of x minus 1 becomes the sine of theta minus 1 divided by x plus 5 becomes the sine of theta plus 5, sine of theta plus 5. So plus a constant of integration and this would then be the result of integrating this integral right there. So kind of interesting. First make the substitution, then use partial fractions technique, and then go ahead and substitute back in what x is equal to. And that's the result.